don't even need to touch the camera, man. It does it on its own. <laughs> I hate new gear. After recently moving into a smaller condo, what was once fun toys has become clutter. New gear is expensive, tough to learn, and takes up space. So why in the world is this thing in front of me? I mean, I still like opening up new gear. I was surprised to see Axoon had produced a motorized slider because I've known them for their wireless transmission systems. In fact, I relied on their Cineview SE for the biggest client project in my career. Maybe that's what swayed me over because as soon as I agreed to review the slider, I knew I potentially made a very big mistake. Squeezed into my 100 square foot room, I'm already suffocating in the gear I own. This has forced me to make a commitment to keep no bad gear, no unnecessary gadgets, period. So with the endless options of adding movement to my camera, why should I keep the slider? Well, there is one proven way to answer that. Gear has always held me back from shooting because of how cumbersome it is to carry and set up. So the compact size of the S60 immediately made filming feel way less intimidating. Despite being lightweight, it feels rugged and easy to travel with. Weighing at only 3.3 pounds, it doesn't feel like I have to sacrifice the most important quality of being a solo shooter, being nimble. Setting up hasn't been a problem because of its variety of mounting options. And because of its size, what used to require setting up two tripods for stable shots, I've learned that less is definitely more. All right, well, let's get low enough. Well, you have feet on here. Yes, that's true. Oh, you're right. This is the perfect time to use it. The four adjustable feet and bubble leveler on top has guaranteed that every frame is never crooked. So I've got to admit, Slider's making a pretty good first impression, but it's going to take way more to win me over. Because whenever electronic components are introduced in gear, I have to mentally brace myself to feel stupid. If I have to read a thick manual or watch several tutorials to use it, that gear is just gonna be another Tetris piece in my storage. But take a look at the side over here. Built-in buttons that are dummy-proof for impatient people like me. With just four buttons and a dial, I passed it over to my buddy Jansen with no instructions or guidance, and he was immediately pulling off expensive-looking shots. Here we go, our cinematic car shot. The first button is to start and stop the motorized movement. The second one changes whether you want a single slide or for it to keep looping the movement. The third one sets your beginning and end position for the slide. And this last button, well, it's supposed to turn the slider off. Honestly, it hasn't given me a reason to press it yet, especially after playing with my favorite feature on this thing, the dial on top. It lets you control the speed of the slide right at your fingertips. Set it as fast as five centimeters a second, or pull it down to as slow as one millimeter per second. It looks comically slow and I swear it's moving, but it's great if you're into shooting time lapses. But just because it's easy to use, it doesn't mean I can actually use it. Because what's the point if it can't support my usual camera rig? Okay, what about vertically? I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna use it like this, but... Whenever I mention expensive looking shots, I'm talking about smooth, complicated movements that would be impossible to do handheld or on a tripod. One of my favorites is this arc shot. By adjusting the rail, the camera orbits around your subject, giving your shot a dynamic touch while keeping your subject at the center of attention. And mounting the camera vertically with a ball head attached to the slider is by far my favorite way of doing it. 
If you like to shoot narratives, you can use it to reveal new information to your audience. You see, the difference is subtle, but it saved me so much headache when I don't want the slider to pan anymore. It's this. These lines tell me when the rail is completely straight. Seeing this made me realize it should be such an obvious feature. But in the past, a simple push-in became 17 takes to make sure my subject stayed center framed. You know what else used to be a problem? That's not tinnitus. That's the sound of my old slider. So when I film talking head setups with it, I have to open up another program and go through four extra steps with no guarantee in removing that annoying buzz. Whereas what you're watching right now is shot on the S60 with the shotgun mic right on the mic. Right on the camera. It's on the camera, not on the mic. And if I forget to plug in my shotgun mic, this is what it sounds like with the on-camera mic. Can you hear my chair creaking? Can you hear the neighbors upstairs a little bit, but not the slider. And if I forget to hit the record button, I guess I've got more to worry about than sound. We made sure we were rolling, right? Yeah, we were definitely rolling. Throughout all the tests I've been putting the slider through, the one factor winning me over the most is how self-contained it is. Even when it comes to power, this slider has a DC option, but you can just throw on a Sony NPF battery to fire it up anywhere you are. So no more of this happening again. And boy, does it last long. I carried three batteries with me for the outdoor shoot and the first batteries still at the full four dots. I was so into the shoot, I forgot the slider even ran off power. But when the batteries don't stop you, there's one thing that always does. You got kicked out. Yeah, this is uh, not an uncommon thing for us. Running gun means like you gun then run. <laughs> gun, <laughs> run. We're doing the running portion right now. <laughs> so another feature I forgot is that this slider comes with an app. It lets you control everything you can with the buttons with no extra features. I mean, there's the left and right buttons, which is kind of helpful, but I'm not gonna whip out the app just to use that. I can imagine it being helpful if I'm filming myself and I don't want to move from my spot, or I'm a solo shooter for an interview operating two cameras at once. At this point, every aspect of the slider has impressed me, but there's one final factor that'll decide whether or not this stays in my gear kit or make me hate new gear forever reliability. The S60 claims to have slick features like mechanical dual access and brushless motors, but none of that means a thing unless every shot is usable. So how many perfect shots do you think we can get out of 10? 10 out of 10 precision. On top of how smooth the 10 shots turned out, what I didn't mention was that I played all 10 shots at the same time. Why? because recreating the movement perfectly each time is essential for compositing VFX shots. For example, I faked a light flickering by cutting between two shots, one with a light off and one with it on. Nope, there were definitely hiccups along the way. Ready, Kira? Like, why does it sound like I'm grinding coffee when I'm just adjusting the pan control knob? And unless I have lanky fingers, stretching for that inner knob is kind of a tight squeeze. I know it's good practice to take the camera off before moving the slider, but I wish there was a slider lock to prevent it from sliding around on its own. Now, the motor can easily handle the weight of my camera in vertical mode while it moves, but it's a different story when it's paused. It's not just my camera syncing, it's my hopes for the slider. The smooth start and stop that the slider promises is impressive when it works. Like right now it's okay. Yeah, but then I notice that sometimes it's a very hard stop as well, especially during the max speed. As much as I love the simplicity of the buttons, it may have backfired without direction buttons. Because what I noticed after playing around with it is that let's say I wanted to move right, and then once over here I wanted to move left again. It has to make its whole way back over here before it goes all the way back. Again, you can control this with the app, but I don't want to specifically whip up my phone just for the direction buttons. Lastly, if you have bigger NPF batteries, you're gonna have to buy smaller ones, always set A and B points, or suffer through this. But are these enough for me to let go of the slider? Sitting at $400, the S60 has quite a few competitors within the same price range. You can get some with triple the travel distance or even have the motor travel with the camera for whatever reason. But what makes the S60 stand out to me is its simple form factor and how the controls are right on the slider. 
no remote that can disconnect in the middle of your shot, clunky parts that stick out, or mandatory app to get the thing to even slide. And for a mostly reliable motorized slider, getting it for $400 feels like getting away with a crime. Oh, he's got the goods! Now, I don't think the slider is for everyone, because if you're looking for big dynamic movements or need long distance slides for your interview setups or narrative work, then this may not provide the range that you need. In fact, there are sliders that extend beyond its length as it slides to stay compact while it's not in use. But be prepared to cough up a few more dollars for that feature. And if you're looking for a slider that you can just chuck into your camera bag, then you could try the smaller variant of the top rig, which is only 41 centimeters. But I found that the S60 hits the sweet spot between size and function. No fluff, just a simple tool that's proven to be a Swiss army knife in various genres of filmmaking. While every second, every inch, and every dollar becomes more and more valuable, do I still hate new gear? I don't know. But I do know, this slider won't be collecting dust.